In today's notes, we're going to take a look at the surface area and volume of right cylinders. So it's those cylinders are standing straight up and not the slanted or oblique ones. Okay? Just to break it down, when you're finding the total surface area, you want to find the area of all the surfaces and then add them together. Remember, we have a lateral area, okay, and we have a base area. A cylinder, if we take a look at the diagram within the table, has two bases and then that lateral surface that's curved around. So surface area for the cylinder is that lateral area and two base areas, okay? And for a cylinder, that lateral surface right here is going around the cylinder. Okay, think of the label on a soup can. Okay, it's going around the cylinder, so it's a curved surface. Okay, and just to highlight again, our surface area is the total area of our curved surfaces, and let's put in there two bases specifically. I'm going to break it down for you in terms of the formula and really explain it. But, and then I'm going to move to the formula sheet that you have for your assessments to show that you can just get the formula for there. Okay, so let's move to the picture. So here's the salad in 3D, and then they took the salad here to the right and laid it flat. Okay, these two circles are the base areas, or capital B. So this is a base area this is a base area, and then this is our lateral area, okay? The area of a circle is pi r squared, but the area of this rectangle, okay, that lateral surface is length times width, but in the cylinder, that length or this dimension here is the height of the cylinder. So when we do length times width, it's going to be h times this dimension here. And remember, that, think of the label going around a soup can, that this surface is curved around the outside of a circle. So that distance around the outside of the circle is your circumference. Okay, and the formula for circumference, given our radius, is 2 pi r. So the lateral surface area equals 2 pi r, that length times the width, which is your height. And just as a reminder, you can go to that reference sheet that you have for your exam and scroll down to lateral area and right here you'll find the lateral surface for your cylinder. So you don't have to have it memorized. You also have up here the area formula for your circle. You just need to memorize that you need to add all of the areas together. So let's go back to your notes. Whoops, we want the four notes. All right, so there's the formula for lateral area explained. Your total surface area is going to be your lateral surface. Remember, it's lateral plus two bases. So it's going to be the 2 pi rh plus 2 times pi r squared. Okay, so let's look at the first question, number one. Find the lateral area of the right circular cylinder shown to the right. So you really need to be careful, and it's in bold. Are you finding just the lateral area or the, two, or the total surface area? Okay, so for the cylinder to the right, in number one, lateral area, just go to your reference sheet. The lateral area, the formula is right here, is 2 pi r h. 
So it's always good to write it down first. So we're going to do 2 pi times our radius. Over here, if you look at the circle at the bottom, we have a radius of 9. So it's 2 pi times 9 times our height. So here's our height of 12. So let's multiply 2 times 12 is 24, and then 24 times 9 would be 216 pi. Now this is an exact answer, and this is an answer in terms of pi. If we need to find the decimal as we're running the nearest tenth, we need to get out our calculators and type in 216 pi. So 2, 16, pi is 678.5840132. Now rounding to the nearest tenths place, because there's an eight to the right of the five, it's going to round to 0 0.6. So our answer, our lateral surface area is approximately 678.6. And because we're talking about area, area is still measured in square units. Because they didn't give me any units, I'm just going to write units squared. Number two, we need to find the total surface area. Well, anytime you find the total surface area, you still have to find the lateral surface area. So we can practice that one more time. 2 pi rh, so it's going to be 2 pi. We have a radius of 3 and we have a height of 15. This cylinder is flipped on its side and remember the height is the segment that connects your two bases and drawn perpendicular. So our height is 15. So 2 pi times a radius of 3 times a height of 15. Our answer is in terms of pi here so I just need to do 2 times 15, which is 30, and then 30 times 3 is 90, leaving it in terms of pi. Okay, so I had that curved surface going around. Now I need the two bases, so the two circles. So our base area is the area of a circle, which is pi r squared. So it's going to be pi times 3 squared. 9 pi, so that's our base area. So my total surface area is going to be 90 pi plus 9 pi plus 9 pi. Or you could have done 2 times 9 pi, which is 18 pi. So adding all that together, treating the pi as if it was an x, 90 plus 9 plus 9 is 108, leaving the pi so units squared. Again, because we're looking at area. So whether you have to find the total surface area or lateral uh, area, you need that formula from your reference sheet. Now on the back, we're going to take a look at volume. Volume is a measure of the number of cubic units needed to fill the space. So here is a right cylinder. And here is the oblique, okay, it's slanted. The height is the measurement that's drawn perpendicular, okay, which would be the same measurement as that. If it's oblique, we have to draw the height outside, okay? But volume for any solid is the area of your base, which is a circle, times the height, okay? Let's rewrite it. The base is a circle, and the area of a circle is pi r squared times h. Let's give a quick check at that formula sheet to see what they give us. So let's first check the common core piece. So for a cylinder, you have the formula. Okay, so you just need to use pi r squared h. So go looking at the first one, 
Find the volume of the right cylinders below in part A. We have a radius of 10 and a height of 12. Let's note the radius and height for both. In part B, we're going to have a radius of 10 as this is the distance all the way across, which is your diameter, and a height of 15. Express the answer in terms of pi so that's a little bit less work. So using the formula from the reference sheet, volume equals pi r squared h. So it's going to be pi times 10 squared times 12. So just calculating or doing the calculations with the numbers. 10 squared is 100 and then 100 times 12 is going to be 1200 pi. So leaving it in terms of pi. And then we do have a unit this time. Again, volumes in terms of cubic units. So that would be cubic meters. So here, volume is pi r squared h from our formula sheet. So this is going to be pi times 10 squared, this times times 15. So 10 squared is 100 like we said, and 100 times 15 is 1500 pi. Still in terms of meters, so cubic meters. Last one, find the volume of the right cylinders below to the nearest tenth. So let's find it in terms of pi again, and then we'll go to the calculator to do them in terms of the nearest tenth. So we have a radius of 5, height of 30. Radius of 9, is that's our diameter, we've got to cut it in half, and a height of pi, or 5, pi. <laughs> so formula. I'm getting that from above, right here. Volume equals pi times r squared, so plug in the 5, times a height of 30. So volume equals pi times 25 times 30. And 25 times 30 is 750 pi. Now we'll find them both in terms of pi, and then I'll open up the calculator to get the decimals. Here, volume is pi times r squared times h. 9 squared is 81, and 81 times 5 is 405 pi. So now let's go to the calculator. We'll first type in 750 pi. Round into the nearest tenth, that would be 2,356.2. So volume is approximately 2,356.2 meters cubed. And then last, we're going to type in the 405 pi. And we get 1,272 to the nearest 10, that would be 0.3. So volume is approximately 1,272.3 cubic meters.